What is going on everybody? This is Twigger coming at you with another Escape from ELO Hell game. I am doing something a little bit different here where I actually played this game um, yesterday evening. This was in uh, one of my promotion series and I already played it, I recorded it, but I realized after I had recorded it that my microphone was turned off. Um, so I was talking to myself the entire time and uh, to no avail because none of the microphone sounds got recorded. So I figured I would come back, I recorded the game, and I'm just going to kind of play it in uh, a media player and do a little bit of commentary over it. Now, the one good thing about this is that I have gotten some requests to skip over some of the kind of more boring things like the Minion Farm at the beginning and kind of just look at some of the, the key plays that happen. It'll shorten down the video a little bit and uh, maybe get to a little bit more action, but I did end up winning this promotion series. The first game, I did get my, uh, my lovely Lux mid, which is my most played champion, and then this was the second game in the uh, promotion series, which I guess I kind of already spoil alerted that one. We're going to win this game, but it's a very interesting game and there was a lot of uh, interesting dynamics with the team and uh, how you can kind of keep your cool and what the power of kind of a positive attitude I know it sounds horribly stupid what the power of a positive attitude can do to a team but um, I will highlight this section because this is probably my best minion farm at the beginning of a game that I've ever had so as you guys can see I'm luring Fizz into a false sense of security by missing my skill shots and um, showing that I am incapable of getting CS so um, I managed to get my first one and um, I'm gonna leave it at one for a little bit here um, I think it's kind of a bit of a, a power spike at the beginning to have that uh, the few CS uh, keeping it under 10 kind of keeps gives me a, a bit of an advantage I would say over fizz but it is just atrocious uh, watching this uh, beginning CS. I it, it had been a while since I had played Lysandra. I've played her quite a few times in ARAMs and Dominion and stuff, but um, I've only played her maybe like five or six times in ranked games. Um, but I do just love her kit a ton, and I think she does really well against Fizz, so I got to kind of counterpick her on him on that one. Um, but, yeah, I think we can probably skip... I don't know how fast this is actually going to zoom by, but um, we can probably skip some of this. Oh man, that skips pretty darn quick. Okay, so probably a pretty good place to start uh, to stop here and, and talk about what's going on. Um, I did manage to get some minion farm, so I'm sitting at 27. And I got about 900 gold, which is exactly what I wanted to go back with, because that's going to be enough for me to pick up my good old-fashioned Chalice of Harmony. And um, you kind of need it on the Sandra. She, uh, she has a ton of uh, spammable spells um, with her Q and her W. But uh, they do take quite a bit of mana, and even with her passive helping me out on that one, uh, you can still run through your mana pretty darn quickly, so I feel like that's a pretty necessary item to have on her. But um, as you guys can also see in this game, we did lose our first blood. It was the Riven up in top lane against that Nidalee, and I hadn't seen Nidalee in ranked for quite some time, so it was kind of interesting seeing her and uh, how she was going to fare in this, uh, this team. But um, yeah, so first blood up to the top lane. Really didn't like to see that because I really don't want Nidalee to get first blood or any kills because uh, she is so mobile of a champion that she can just like roam down and kill somebody, kill me, go into the jungle, kill the jungler, like not the person that I want to have kills. Um, but yeah, it looks like this is uh, pretty important here is that I'm starting to roam. I have started to learn this where I can actually leave my lane on mobile champions and... Um, Gank other lanes. I mean, it's currently our jungler's top, and I believe the bot lane does know this. So, love this ability using my passage to get over there, using the ultimate onto Ezreal, putting the ignite down, getting the W as well. So, really chaining that CC well. The exhaust also coming down, and I'm gonna pick up my first kill of the game onto Ezreal. Um, really like picking up that kill. It gives me a nice little chunk of gold. Um, makes bottom lane a little bit easier for Graves and Janna. Um, all in all, just a nice thing, and Lee Sin's gonna jump on me, but <laughs> later, bitch! <laughs> just get to use my E and get on out of there. So I, I feel like the Lysandra mechanics uh, with her E are just sometimes so much fun to play with. Um, they're great for engaging, but you can also get yourself out of some sticky situations, and uh, it, it turns out to be a lot of fun when you start playing her kind of the right way and not don't get me wrong i am not saying that i'm playing her the right way at all <laughs> like um i still have a lot to learn on this champion there's no way that i'm pro at her but 
Um, I feel like once you start kind of getting the uh, the idea behind her E and her W and comboing those things really well, um, she's just she's so damn mobile and her gank potential is great, her damage potential is great, and I'm getting ultimated by the Fizz. Um, so I get the W off underneath the turret, do a lot of damage to him, the tower sitting him as well, and now we're sitting here doing like a stare off. This is now just like a big dick competition, and uh, cause I know that Fizz can just jump right in on me with his Q, and if he procs his W, he'll probably kill me, but luckily Elise is here to support me. I'm wondering if we can maybe find him. He comes out, uses his playful trickster, tries to get away. I use my, ah, oh, and this is exactly it. See, I used my W way too early. Um, which was really unfortunate. Um, I used it before to try to get the Fizz, and I don't know what screwed up there, but uh, this is what shows that there is no way that I am uh, <laughs> a pro at Lysandra, because I just I probably could have played that a lot better, and we probably could have gotten a double kill and not had any deaths. But uh, And see, here's me admitting, admitting it to my team that I used my uh, W2 early. And this is something that you gotta do, I find, and this seems to very rarely happen in ranked games is when uh, people just admit that sometimes you screw up. And uh, I definitely did there, is that if I had used my W at the appropriate time when Lee Sin was coming in on me, um, we might have been able to really make something out of that, but instead uh, we both ended up dying. Uh, we did get one kill out of it, so it's not the worst trade in the world, but certainly not the best. And as we're talking about that, Riven died again up in the top lane to that Nidalee. Um, really not good, because uh, Riven has that kind of... Well, the early game got a, a little bit nerfed, but uh, her early mid game is a very, very strong point for Riven. And if she's already losing that, <laughs> scary, scary stuff. Um... But I got my blue buff, and you're seeing I can I can put quite a bit of damage onto this fizz, like especially now that I can um, spam out my abilities more. Uh, it means that my lane is going to be pushing quite a bit, uh, which is unfortunate. But it looks like I'm roaming down to this bot lane again because Lee Sin is there, and I want to kill this bastard. He killed me the last time, so I want a revenge kill. So I try to get Graves to come and bait this one in, but <laughs> Lee Sin nubs it up and misses it. But here comes Fizz, and now I just say fucking fish, and I'm gonna make frozen fish out of this asshole. So, get my ultimate off before he uses the playful trickster. He completely whiffs his ultimate, um, and I use Lee Sin to kill him. So, using that mechanic of the Q to hit him and bring him back, um, freeze the Lee Sin to try to keep him off my team. Use my passage again. Hey, that goes down onto the Sona. Should be a kill, I would think. Yep, there we go. So I get another kill there. So now I'm sitting at 3 1 1. Um, at least did die though, and. Uh, I believe it's Janna who's now pinging to go for the dragon. I was kind of concerned about this because we did not kill the Lee Sin. And Graves is currently just uh, chilling like a villain. Now he's coming down. But uh, they don't have any vision of it because Janna was nice enough to put that pink ward down. But I'm just trying to spam out as many abilities as I can. And we're trying to swap off the dragon aggro because uh, we're not very strong at this point. Um, only level I'm only level eight, six, and seven, so we're doing our best to kind of swap things off and make this a, a possibility for our team, and we do end up getting the dragon. Um, so yeah, just telling my team once again, good job, um, really, really nice plays there. Uh, got two kills, picked up the dragon, and now I'm gonna get the hell out of there because Fizz wants the D, wants my D. And I'm just going to continue to harass him. Like, the best part about having those minion waves is that it makes harassing so damn easy, especially on a melee champion like Fizz. But now we can see I've hit that lovely point of having 1,600 gold. And um, <laughs> the lucky thing is that I'm looking at what's going on right now. Who needs directed cam, right? I just have to play the game. And Elise is going to get picked off by the Lee Sin. And I stopped going B because I want to try to get up here because I was hoping they're going to dive the Riven. And maybe I can try to help something here. And they are going for him. And Riven's going to try to get away and goes right into the Ezreal Ultimate. <laughs> so that was just, oh, that was a pretty sweet play. Just <laughs> ends up escaping that, uh, which was a pretty sweet escape getting away from that, but uh, uh, using those cues to get right into the Ezreal ultimate, which is pretty damn funny. So um, I'm realizing that I'm pretty strong here, and I don't want this turret to go down, and I've got my ultimate available, so if they try to tower dive me, I can put my ultimate on myself and uh, manage to survive this one, but I decided to go ballsy as a mofo and just start doing as much damage as I can. I managed to pick off the, uh, the Nidalee Jan. is giving me a lot of help here. 
She blows Lee Sin away from me. But uh, here we go. Blind Q. And there we go. There's the double Q. Oh, the double Q. The double kill, I think, is what I was trying to say. Um, so, yeah. Going back now. Picking up another two kills. Janna really helped me out there. And now Graves was, uh, I believe, just bitching about... Um, Janna zoning him because she was up in top lane. Um, it's true, he probably would be getting zoned a little bit down in the bot lane, but as I'm just explaining here, is that uh, she got me a double kill, which was very, very important, because now I'm at 511, 69 CS. <laughs> That's a sex thing. Um, so yeah, I'm feeling pretty good. I got my needlessly large rod, and I finished my Athenes, and the shit talk comes out of the Lee Sin. She gave up on you because you're crap, so... Already a little bit of a bitch move coming out of the Lee Sin, giving that uh, little smack talk to the Graves. But um, so far, things are going pretty decently. There's quite a few people in the bot lane. It looks like Jan is going to get dove here. But uh, <laughs> Fizz completely missing the Ignite going down onto Jan as well. I'm now coming in. I want a piece of this. I'm not going to let that fish faced bastard get out of here. Whoop! One shot. <laughs> Pretty much completely stole that kill, and Janna managed to get out of that one, which was a pretty sweet tower dive. So, props, yeah, exactly. At least saying this Jan is god, just pretty props to that uh, that Jan and making some pretty sweet plays there. Um, so it's kind of this whole idea of what I was talking about before is that you know give credit where credit's due. Um, it was a great play by Janna being able to stay alive in that one, and it's good that the team lets her know that we appreciate that play. Because it's going to make her play better. And one thing that I uh, can't seem to wrap my head around with uh, people in, in Ranked is um, when they think that like blaming their team and like constantly yelling and harassing their team is going to make them play any better. Like It's just going to make them play worse. So I, I've never really understood that. Like I just find if you're really mad at how somebody's playing, you might as well just shut up. Like sit there and grind your teeth because you yelling at them or like telling them that they're doing fucking awful and putting it in a like a really criticizing kind of way rather than like a constructive sort of way it's it's just going to make them play worse and they're not going to want to help you if you're just like digging into them so yeah i've never really got that but uh luckily this game wasn't really like that yet uh with my team um see even saying thank you to my jungler for giving me blue buff she didn't have to do that <laughs> i really appreciate that they do but uh the jungler doesn't always have to give the uh, the mid blue buff, so always good to have that blue buff, especially on somebody like me who's now sitting at 6-1-1 with 91 CS. Like, I'm pretty damn strong. So I want to have every advantage that I can get. So there's Fizz using his playful trickster. The bastard. But uh, getting some damage off, doing about, like, almost half of his health with two of my Qs. And see, like, a two-second cooldown. Like, I can just spam my Q like nothing. And with my passive and the blue buff, I, I, like, Fizz can't even really come in here. And Fizz is normally supposed to be that assassin, but um, he can't really get near me. Um, Riven dying once again, and this is when I decide, you know what, F it, YOLO swag, go and kill that Fizz. And I just kind of, like, prance on out of there. So now I'm dominating. Um, I just kind of felt he was being a little bit too close to me. I need my personal spaces, Lissandra, you know, little ice bubble. Um, our bot lane turret did go down, um, I decided just to recall because once again I'm sitting at that lovely spot of having nearly 1700 gold, so I want to uh, pick up some stuff and nope, I decided not to. I'm going to clear this wave first. And um, the Riven and I believe it was the Elise, oh geez, so Ezreal really wants to pick me off there, I think they want to uh, make a play happen there. Um, Ezra, the Riven and the Elise are a duo queue in this game. And um, the Riven had first picked Elise for the jungle for his friend, and then the jungler picked Riven for the top lane. So I think that's what he was complaining about, that maybe he doesn't play Riven all that much, which is why he's not exactly doing fantastic in that lane. Oh, I just had to take a sip of my drink there. And um, so he, I, I can't really... So yeah, 1 and 5 for that Riven right now. And see, there you go. There, see, being a good, good mid laner, saying just hang in there, right? You just keep doing your thing. And then look, they're ganking Nidalee right now. They do manage to kill her. So that's a big deal, right? Gives Riven a little bit more of a confidence boost that uh, maybe they can do something here. And I just pop my ultimate and just blow him up with, uh, with Graves. And I try to get out of this one, but the Q coming out of Sona. But 
it's kind of one of those scenarios where I'm sitting there and I and great cocoon coming out of that Elise to stop them from going in onto the graves. And um, this is something to point out here is that I say great cocoon Elise because that was a great, great play. But now I'm telling them to be. They saved that fight and nothing happened. That's great. And then Elise decides to dive in for no reason. And she's still going, still going. It's like, <laughs> I'm just like telling them to be and telling them to be like they saved the fight it was great like we only lost me and my shutdown went to a sona which i'm not overly concerned about but um then at least just got like bloodthirsty and went to try to get a kill and yeah, ended up her dying as well <laughs> and then riven dies again <laughs> so it's just it's just yeah, and so I'm trying to tell the Graves, because Graves is now just harshing on the Riven. Riven's going to start harshing on that. But I basically just try to explain to people that, you know, Riven is not really worth any gold anymore. Like, I don't even think right now Riven is worth the summoners that Nidalee is using on him to kill him. So I'm really not too concerned about Riven dying anymore, because <laughs> what's it really doing for the enemy team? And now Riven arguing back, Graves arguing back as well, it just, like, these are how bad things start happening in games, is when, uh, can you go back to Mexico or something? Like, I, I just, yeah, in Canada, see, I really wanted to step in here because I was like, Canada, bro, hey, like, because I, I'm from Canada as well, but I'm not getting in the midst of two people arguing, it's just, there's no point. Um... So, getting hit by that Ezreal ultimate, not a fan. I really wanted this Lee Sin to come in on me here. Like, I'm just waiting for it. And, um, I will say, this Lee Sin, I, I have a lot of respect for. He played really, really well. So, that ward is set up there. And he has a couple great little plays where my reaction time just cannot keep up with it. Um... I believe it happens right around here. So lands the Q onto Janna. I'm trying to get Janna to run in there. And yeah, I tried to get my W off, but he just, he got really quick there. Um, the Fizz ultimate whiffing completely. Not the first time that we've seen that happen. So I'm feeling pretty strong here to kind of make something happen. Elise is now finally making her way up here. We just need to kind of land something. But uh, I'm not exactly sure what that's going to end up being. But I'm still just kind of walking around, doing my icy little thing. Um, yeah, and I'm seeing a fight up top with Riven. And it's going pretty well. I, I think Riven might be able to do this one. But the heal coming out, the ignite going down, the stun, and the ultimate was not enough to kill Nidalee. So there's another death for Riven. Which is just... <laughs> I was making my way up there to see if I could help. But it just... It was just over too quick and... Yep, it's uh, that's it's a thing that's happening up there. So <laughs> the lucky thing is that, um, as I was saying before, Riven is not worth much gold anymore, and Nidalee hasn't killed anybody else really on the team. So it's not like her gold is getting out of control. She's uh, definitely got a lead, um, but constantly killing the same person over and over and over again is not going to make her snowball ridiculously well because Riven is going to be worth less and less gold. She's going to be making less and less gold from the kills. So right now the more kills I don't really care because as long as they're just on Riven she can have as many kills as she wants. Um, myself on the other hand have killed a plethora of players from Sona to Ezreal to Fizz. I don't think I've killed Lee Sin yet. I'd like to kill Lee Sin. <laughs> I haven't killed Nidalee yet. Um, I will say yet. But <laughs> um, I'm sure uh, that later on in the game I'll kill Lee Sin. I, I feel like I do. I'm not sure if I do. I don't know. But yeah, there's... Once again, just doing those plays. It's very, very cool. I've, uh, I don't think I've ever really been able to do Lee Sin like that. Um, I, I don't use Smart Cast. Um, which I've heard on Lee Sin is uh, much, much better. Um, but I don't use Smart Cast on any champions. And it's not to say that I think it's, it's bad. I think Smart Cast is very, very smart to use, especially on champions like Lee Sin. But uh, I just, I've never used it, so it would be such a transition for me to try to get into Smart Cast, and I'm just not willing to take the time to do that. So I kind of like just playing with the regular cast system. But um, doing a little bit of harassment onto Sona. 
doesn't really do a whole lot. The Ezreal ultimate coming out. Managed to dodge that with a nice little uh, slide to the right. Um, and it just kind of goes back to farming again. Um, me spamming out my Qs. I do have the blue buff and my passive, so I'm spamming out things like nothing. And um, four members of their team are here, and Riven is once again up there with Nidalee. And um, I don't know if you guys have been paying attention to the earlier game, but I don't think it's going to go well for her. So I believe that was me who pinged Riven um, because I wanted Janna to go up there or somebody at least to go up there because Riven is going to die again. <laughs> like that's, that's just going to happen. So I don't want that turret going down. I don't care if Riven dies, but I don't want the turret going down. So Janna went up there to try to help the Riven out and uh, Nidalee's now running back. So hopefully that is helping. Um, and while we're mentioning that, there is a bit of a fight in that top lane. Hopefully they can kill the uh, Nidalee. The uh, ultimate coming down from Fizz, landing finally onto Graves, and they do kill Nidalee as well. The crescendo only landing onto the Graves, but I have a great ultimate that gets everybody. Locks down the Sona, I pick up the Ezreal. I'm trying to get my ass out of here, but it's not going to be enough. Uh, Fizz ends up picking me up. <coughs> but we do get the kill onto the Fizz, at least picking that one up, and myself getting a lovely assist. So me saying that that works, because it was a great fight for us. Um, the Lee Sin gets over there. A great flash from the Elisa. That was a very thick wall to get over. And uh, it's going to repel and manage to land onto the Lee Sin and kills Lee Sin. So, <coughs> excuse me. Definitely going to give Elise props for that. Because I did not think Lee Sin was going to get killed there. But Elise showing some definite balls going over there and using that flash to get over that really really thick wraith wall managing to get that one and chasing down getting the repel and that means we had a bunch of people in top lane which means that we're going to be able to take that inner tier turret so with that riven who was down so low um being killed all the time by that uh nidalee we're now looking at it just by the way the team fights have worked out for us we're they're down two turrets in the top lane while we're only down one so one of those things where now it looks like top lane won. The champion might be stronger um, in the top lane, but our team has won the top lane because now we have the uh, the open inhibitor turret, which we can go up there at any point just to kind of start harassing that one. So, yeah, I placed a ward down at Dragon and uh, just telling everybody to keep it up um, because we're playing really, really well. Um, we do have that advantage. We got the Dragon. Um, we're up in turrets, uh, we're up one kill, and I am fed as a motherfucker. So, Fizz ultimate missing again. Like, this Fizz was just not having a good day, I have to say. Like, <laughs> I felt really, really bad for him, kinda. But, uh, he could not land an ultimate to save his fishy freaking life. So, it looks like a little fight might be brewing here. I don't know if anything's actually gonna happen. Um, no, it doesn't look like anything's actually going to happen here. Um, but here's Nidalee, and here's where the fun starts. I am going to lock this bitch down like nothing. So, yeah, Nidalee's a really mobile champion, unless she is frozen in ice. So, I'm kind of a good counter for that. But now it looks like a fight might be brewing here. They're going to try to get onto this Graves. So I'm just going to freeze Fizz right where he stands. He already used his ultimate previously. And now I'm gonna just going to use a nice little Q, pick off that Fizz. I'm going to dodge the Crescendo barely and lock down the zone. And Lee Sin kicks me over into the Wraith Pit to safety. So you got to love plays like that. I thought I might be able to steal that Sona kill, but uh, I don't. And uh, Riven comes in and gets a double kill. So once again, that big thing it did not have a very good early game in the slightest. Really fed a lot, but just to that one champion... And then coming in and actually having a big part in that team fight with her CC and her ultimate damage. And this is me just admitting that I am so damn strong, but I do not want to stay there for much longer just because I'm very scared as to what might happen. <coughs> so, healing up a little bit, but I don't want to heal for too much because I'm seeing a big creep wave down in the bot lane. So I want to go and clear that without the turret taking too many um, of, those C of those creeps. So, uh, we got the... I don't think we got the inhibitor. Did we get the inhibitor? I'll see when the minimap moves. We did get the inhibitor. So, that was a big deal. That was a huge fight for us. And it was, I, I would say, a huge fight for Riven. So, it got her a couple kills. She's going to be able to go back, get a couple items. Got to be feeling pretty happy about that. And uh, it's probably feeling like she's part of the team again. <laughs> rather than just being completely isolated in that top lane just to continue dying to Nidalee, but 
the one thing that I started seeing here um, was that I'm extremely fed. Technically, Nidalee is extremely fed, but nowhere near as fed as I am just because <clears throat> I've been killing multiple different people who are worth more and more gold than, uh, than killing Riven, what, like seven times or something like that? So I am much more fed than Nidalee. So when it comes to Clash of the Titans between Nidalee and myself, I don't think I'm going to have an issue killing her. And that's what I'm, I'm kind of keeping in my mind here. That, And it's also the fact that Lysandra can lock Nidalee down, just like you saw in the last fight. If I can land my combo onto Nidalee, she's not going to be in the fight anymore. If we don't kill her off of that combination, I will at least get her low enough that she will have to go back. Like, her heal is not going to do enough to keep her in a fight, or she'll be one-shot by me. So, it was kind of nice seeing that their fed champion got blown up by us. Um, definitely helps. So Elise is now pinging for this Baron. Uh, Ezreal is bottom, but it looks like the Sona's coming up. So I'm just kind of sitting here hoping that I can use my E and then pick her off. But um, they didn't end up coming as far as I wanted them to. And it looks like we're going to start the Baron now. Um, Jan is signaling no. Um, the entire team's here. <coughs> so we do finally decide to back off. Smart move. That doesn't normally happen in solo queue. But um, Nidalee is here. And now we're just kind of waiting for something to happen here. So I put my W onto the Lee Sin, try to do as much damage as I can. Um, I at least stop him from using his uh, his Q to go through to, I believe it was Jan or Graves that he landed that on. But uh, I think we kind of want to make a fight happen here. Because we're just kind of chasing up into the middle. Um, so yeah, I'm just trying to tell my team in horrible typing that Nidalee actually is not here. So we kind of want to chase this down. So now we've got Fizz kind of pinned here because now he's going up and we have a lot of mobility. So I'm just going to use my E, come up here, catch him, and pretty much blow him up. And then let somebody else get that kill because I am fed enough as it is. Do bear. <laughs> Do Ron. <laughs> I just can't type today. Do Ron, guys. Do Ron. I'm sure he's a really nice guy. So here's where I made the play here of... I know I can take Nidalee, so I'm not even going to let her get into my team. So she can do exactly what she wants up there, but I'm going to keep her up there. So I see her jump over, and I'm just going to do the same thing. I'm going to go to the other side, and I'm going to make sure that I don't care how fed Nidalee is. I am stronger than she is, so I'm going to keep her out. But now we're getting kind of scared, because now I want to stop Lee Sin, so I use my ultimate to uh, stop him from casting his smite. And uh, we managed to pick up the Lee Sin. We did pick up the Baron, a great smite from the Elise. <coughs> and I want the Ezreal. But I can't catch the Ezreal, so <laughs> I'm just going to use my E to get over and uh, grab the grab the Sona. And luckily it was Graves picking up the kill, because at this point, with the items that I have uh, at this early in the game, it's kind of the mid-game here, I really don't need any more kills. Like, I am really damn strong. I can pretty much go with the normal game. I want people like Graves and Riven to start getting a lot of kills, because they need to get to the same level that I am, and then we'll just be unstoppable. But the problem is, if I die... Um, not necessarily now that we have Baron, but if I had died previously in a team fight first, it probably would have been a, a game over team fight. Uh, just I mean for the not the actual game, but I just meant for uh, that team fight because I'm the main source of damage for our team, and I'm also keeping other people alive with my W and my ultimate. So there's Lee Sin trying to make something happen here. Um, we are just kind of like knocking away at this uh, at these turrets. I use my ultimate onto the Nidalee and I try to catch her, but it doesn't look like I'm going to be able to get to her. Or do I? Um, not enough to actually pick her off here, but I do still have my uh, my Zhonya's that I'm waiting to use, and I think that's when I realized that I had my Zhonya's. Was I was like, why am I backing up? So I just decided to go back in here, and then I decide I'm not going to chase because we just took down that uh, final turret. And we can just start poking off on this Nexus, and this is actually going to be GG, so it was a very, very good game. Um, I had a great time playing it, my team did really, really well, and that's the whole point, is that even if somebody like your, uh, your Riven Top is feeding, don't get all up in their shit about it, because it's not going to make them play better. Keep supporting them, make sure that you guys know how your team is doing, and make sure that everybody else wins their lane. So hopefully you guys enjoyed that one, and I will see you guys in the next commentary or whatever video I happen to post next.